For centuries, the true essence of Jesus' teachings has been shrouded in mystery, whispered among a select few, and hidden from the pages of history. But what if I told you that beyond the well-traveled path of mainstream religious doctrine lies a secret roadmap to divine wisdom, a pathway illuminated by Jesus himself, but concealed from the many? In 1945, a discovery near Nag Hammadi, Egypt, unearthed such a map, the Gospel of Thomas. This collection of cryptic sayings attributed to Jesus offers an intriguing glimpse into a profound spiritual journey that promises a direct encounter with the divine essence within us. This gospel, unlike any other, strips away the surface appearance of traditional religious practice, inviting us into an intimate dialogue with the divine. It challenges us to look beyond the material world, to discover a kingdom not of land and decree, but of consciousness and light. The teachings of Jesus, as presented in the Gospel of Thomas, invite us to unlock the divine spark within. What secrets do these ancient sayings hold? And how can they transform the way that we understand our existence, our purpose, and our connection to the universe? The answers long buried under the sands of time and the commands of emperors hold the power to alter our perception of reality itself. By weaving together the threads of ancient wisdom with modern insights, we can discover a rich blend of spiritual understanding that goes beyond the limits of history and tradition. In this video, we'll explore how the secret sayings of Jesus challenge the foundations of established religious thought and open the door to a realm of endless possibilities. We'll uncover the buried and profound truth of how to pray the right way to manifest significant changes as outlined by one of the leading experts in religion and the field of linking science with spirituality and will delve into the heart of Gnosticism, a belief system that celebrates the pursuit of direct knowledge of the divine and how it offers a unique lens through which to view our spiritual quest. Through the lens of the lost gospel of Thomas, we will rediscover the power of thought, the magic of belief, and the transformative potential of aligning our inner world with the divine matrix that surrounds us. By the end of this video, you will not only be introduced to a deeper understanding of the secret sayings of Jesus, but also be equipped with the knowledge to use these teachings to manifest your reality in ways you never thought possible. Let's unlock the mysteries hidden within these ancient texts and learn how to harness the power within ourselves for massive personal transformation. Hidden away for centuries, the discovery of this collection of ancient manuscripts offered a new lens through which to view early Christian mysticism. This was Gnosticism. Gnosticism, a term derived from the Greek word gnosis, meaning knowledge, emphasizes personal spiritual enlightenment and direct experience of the divine, or what is referred to as God within. By promoting a personal connection with this divine essence, Gnosticism gives a distinctive path to spirituality, encouraging followers to seek truth beyond the material world in a way that affects our entire existence. The discovery of the Gospel of Thomas among the Nag Hammadi texts in 1945 shows us a distinct difference from what is considered to be official Christian texts. This compilation of Jesus' sayings highlighted a Christianity that valued personal enlightenment over established authority, leading to its exclusion from the Orthodox canon. This exclusion reveals that early Christians had a wide range of ideas, beliefs, and internal debates that were far broader than recognized. Because the gospel focused on a personal connection with the divine, it was different from the more organized way of understanding faith and salvation that the mainstream church was promoting. In this historical context, Roman Emperor Constantine plays a crucial role. Constantine was the first Roman emperor to convert to Christianity, and his reign marked a turning point for the religion. Before his time, Christianity was one of many religions practiced in the Roman Empire, and often faced persecution. However, Constantine's conversion in the early 4th century and his subsequent support significantly elevated Christianity's status, leading to its recognition as a major religion within the empire. He influenced the conditions under which decisions were made regarding which books were included in the Bible and which were not. Constantine's most notable contribution to Christianity was his convening of the First Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. This council was created to address various theological disagreements that were deemed as threatening to Christian unity. 
including the nature of Jesus Christ's divinity. The Council represented the first major effort to define Orthodox Christian belief according to their standards. When the Roman Empire started supporting Christianity, there was a system set up that favored certain religious texts and ideas. Because of this support, some writings like the Gospel of Thomas, which focused on finding spiritual truth through personal experience, didn't fit in with what they wanted in the Bible. The church wanted to keep a consistent set of beliefs and a clear leadership structure, and these more personal teachings were left out because they didn't match the church's approach. Some modern scholars also consider the Gospel of Thomas as falsely attributed works. One source I found stated it this way, the Gospel of Thomas fails to describe any of Jesus' historic life and focuses instead on his words alone. This connection between hidden knowledge and salvation, or spiritual enlightenment, is characteristic of Gnostic groups of this era. While some skeptical scholars would like to include the Gospel of Thomas as one of five early Gospels describing the life, ministry, and statements of Jesus, there were, and still are, good reasons to exclude it from the reliable record. The general idea behind these secret teachings is that Jesus passed on hidden knowledge to those closest to him, which is a core concept in ancient Gnosticism. The Gospel of Thomas begins by stating, these are the hidden sayings that the living Jesus spoke and Didymus Judas Thomas wrote down. One of these hidden pieces of knowledge is said to be that by making thought and emotion one, we have the power to pray in such a way that we create miracles of abundance, peace, and healing into our own lives. Greg Braden, a New York Times bestselling author known for his deep research in the religions of the world and for linking science and spirituality in a way that assists us in harnessing our innate power, speaks on this here. The lost gospel of Thomas is powerful because it is believed to be the actual words of Jesus as he was teaching those around him how to use the power of human emotion in his life. Now, I'm going to share two of these images with you. We said earlier, to unleash the force of the divine matrix in our lives, first, we have to understand how it works, and the science tells us how it works. Secondly, we must speak the language that the divine matrix recognizes, and science cannot tell us that. That comes from our past, from our culture, from our history, from those who have learned and used this language for thousands of years. So this is what we're doing right now. We're learning what did Jesus and what did the great masters say about this, this language. Because it's the same whether you're talking Buddhist or Hindu or Christian, pre-Christian traditions, they're all telling us that there is a field of energy and that we have the language to use that field in this gospel. Okay, so here, here's what we're doing. We've been in the Buddhist monasteries in Tibet and they're telling us that we must, that feeling is the prayer, one. Two, that we must feel as if our prayers have already been answered. Okay, and now we're in an Egyptian monastery with the texts that used to be our tradition before they were edited. And we're going to look at the instructions that tell us how to do that. Let's look at a couple of the secret sayings of Jesus to dive a little deeper into what Greg Braden is saying here. And then we will listen to his instructions to feel as though our prayers have already been answered based on these sayings. Sayings 48 and 106 of the secret sayings of Jesus from the Gospel of Thomas are very similar in nature. In saying 48, Jesus says, If two make peace with one another in one and the same house, then they will say to the mountain, Move away, and it will move away. Saying 106, Jesus says, When you make the two into one, you will become sons of man. And when you say, Mountain, move away, it will move away. From Greg Braden's research of religions throughout the world, he explains in this clip what these sayings mean as they align with those other religious texts that he's studied. Verse 106, look at what the lost gospel of Thomas says. It says, when you make the two thought and emotion one. 
So the Gospel of Thomas is talking about thought and emotion. It's saying when you make your thought and your emotion one, look at what happens. You will say to the mountain, mountain move away and the mountain will move away. Saying that when you can marry your thought and your emotion into one single potent force, that is when you have the power to speak to the world. When you make the two one, what are they talking about? What are the two? Let's go back to our image. The two, thought and emotion. When the two become one in our hearts, we create the feelings in our bodies. When thought and emotion become one, let's go back to the Gospel of Thomas, another verse. Now this is verse 48. It says almost the same thing. This was so important that it was recorded at least three different times in the same Gospel. Look at what this says. If the two make peace with each other in this one house. When Jesus is talking about the house or the temple, what is he talking about? Precisely you. You are the house. You are the temple. If the two make peace with each other in this house, if thought and emotion become one, if they make peace with each other in this house, look what happens. They will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. He's telling us again in a completely different verse how powerful it is to marry thought and emotion. But they still haven't told us how. How do you do this? In the early Christian Bible, your Bible today, there is a passage. How many have heard, ask and ye shall receive? Have you heard that before? Ask and ye shall receive. Have you heard that? I know people that ask and ask and ask and nothing happens. Because the asking is not done with the voice. The asking is not done, please, please, bring this to my world. That's not asking. To ask, we must speak to the field, to the divine matrix, in the language that the field recognizes. The field doesn't recognize our voice, it recognizes the power of our heart. Remember this morning, our heart, we have a feeling, creates electrical waves, magnetic waves. That's the language the field recognizes. So when you create the feeling in your heart as if your prayer is already answered, that creates the electrical and the magnetic waves that bring that answer to you. Ask and you shall receive. While we still have this passage in our text. In the Bible that you have today, the King James Version, John 16, 23, 24, what you have is the condensed version. You have the edited version. The edited version looks like this. This is the edited version. Whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Okay. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Okay, this is the edited version. This is so amazing to me because they took out the two sentences that tell us how to ask. In the fourth century, when the edits happened, they took those two sentences out. Would you like to see those two original sentences? Okay, we'll go back into the original Aramaic and we'll look at a new translation. This is the original Aramaic. So this is the retranslated version with the missing pieces. All things that you ask straightly, directly from inside my name, you will be given. It says, so far you've not done this. Because if we ask with our voice, we have not done this. Now here's the piece that was edited. Here is what was lost. Look at these two very powerful sentences. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer 
be enveloped by what you desire that your gladness be full. It's not saying to speak a word, it's saying to be surrounded, to feel as if. If you are surrounded, you are feeling as if your answer has already happened. Be enveloped. If you want the perfect relationship in your life, if you want the healing in the body of your loved ones, feel the feeling of what it is like as if that has already happened. Be enveloped by what you desire, because that is when your thought and your emotion become one. You think the thought of the healing in your loved ones, and you feel the love of that thought. They become one, and that is the language that this field recognizes. Does that make sense? Are you okay with that? The secret sayings of Jesus resonate with the theme of the relentless pursuit of truth and inner power. Let's take a look at some of these other sayings to see how they align with what Greg Brayton has just described. Saying number three, Jesus says, If those who lead you say, See, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you, It is in the sea, then the fish will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you, and it is outside of you. When you come to know yourselves, then you will be known, and you will realize that you are the children of the living Father. But if you do not come to know yourselves, then you exist in poverty and you are poverty. The kingdom we learn to search for in our outer reality is neither above nor below, but within and all around. This saying invites us to explore the possibility that enlightenment and the realization of our divine birthright comes not from external sources, but from knowing ourselves and the innate connection that we have to what Greg refers to as the divine matrix. It's a call to uncover the wealth within, for in self-discovery lies our true connection to our divinity and all that is rightfully ours. This highlights the concept of self-awareness and inner wisdom as pathways to experiencing the divine, rather than putting importance on things that are in the outer reflection of reality. We go within and pray with our thoughts and our emotions and envelop ourselves with that to make any and all changes that we desire from life. The kingdom that is created inwardly reflects itself externally. In saying 22, Jesus says, when you make the two one, and when you make the inside like the outside, and the outside like the inside, and the above like the below, then you will enter the kingdom. Much like what Greg Braden discussed in verses 48 and 106, this is the third time in the secret sayings of Jesus that making the two one is mentioned. It reiterates the power in aligning our thoughts and our emotions to create intentionally. When you make the inside like the outside, and the outside like the inside, is a call to remain faithful to the new thought and emotion until it becomes the experience. This saying speaks to achieving a state of inner balance and harmony where the separation between the inner self and the outer worlds dissolves so that the external circumstances reflect inner beliefs and values from a higher perspective, a concept that corresponds with intentional manifestation. In saying 24, it states, His disciples said, Show us the place where you are, since it is necessary for us to seek it. He said to them, Whoever has ears, let him hear. There is light within a man of light, and he lights up the whole world. If he does not shine, there is darkness. This saying tells us that the spiritual awakening is an inward process, where the light within, an individual's divine essence or consciousness, has the potential to light up not just the self, but the entire world. As within, so without. Who we are on the inside is created in the world around us. Within each of us is the power to not only light our way, but also to cast out any shadows around us. This is relevant to what Greg Braden discussed earlier about seeing in your mind and feeling in your heart that a loved one is healed. The call to those who can hear implies that understanding and enlightenment are available to those prepared to recognize and cultivate what this inner light truly is. Saying 27, Jesus says, if you do not abstain from this world, you will not find the kingdom. Simply put, we must go inward to create the changes that we desire, leaving the outer world as it is and remaining in faith of our thought and feeling states as we align them. 
saying 50 states. If they say to you, where did you come from? Say to them, we came from the light, the place where the light came into being on its own accord. Here we're guided to declare our birth from the light, a self-manifested pure essence. This expresses a profound connection to a spiritual realm of enlightenment, highlighting our inherent bond with the divine beyond the physical world. Saying 70, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. This saying aligns with what we're already told in the current version of the Standard Bible in Deuteronomy 30, 19. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. This reveals the power of bringing forth our inner selves through the choices that we make and the mindset and feeling states that we carry. What we express inwardly has the ability to save us or cause detriment in our lives. If you believe circumstances are against you, that is what you will manifest. If you believe that you can turn inward and create the thoughts and feelings that the whole world works in your favor, that will be your experience of reality. The power is within your thoughts and feelings. This saying highlights the necessity of manifesting our inner truth and power for personal and spiritual salvation. Saying 77, I am the light that is over all things. I am all. From me all came forth, and to me all attained. Split a piece of wood, I am there. Lift up the stone and you will find me there. I am the light illustrates the divine essence that permeates all existence. From the splitting of the wood to the lifting of the stones, it reveals an intimate presence and connection to all aspects of the natural world. This indicates a universe infused with divinity, where the divine essence is present in all aspects of the physical world. All is one, nothing is separate. There's a deep interconnectedness of all things even the things that may seem difficult to recognize as embodying this divine essence. It speaks to the manifestation of spiritual truths in the everyday world, in everyone and in everything. It is always giving you what you believe and feel it gives you, as a demonstration of the power that you hold as it's in you as well. There are a total of 114 of these secret sayings of Jesus within the Gospel of Thomas. If this information ignites curiosity within you, I encourage you to explore them further and make your own interpretations. That said, there is no doubt that these sayings prioritize introspection for wisdom and enlightenment over the traditional accounts of Jesus' life and teachings. This divine essence, according to Gnostic teachings, can be awakened through dedication to self-discovery and spiritual practices. In the mystical texts of the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus is shown more as a teacher of wisdom than just a savior. He doesn't follow the usual story of his life, but shares teachings that encourage people to think deeply and discover truths. This view matches the Gnostic idea of learning about God directly through personal experience within the inner realms, with Jesus helping people find a divine part of themselves. The Gospel of Thomas offers a different take on Jesus' message offering a path of self-exploration and connection to the divine energy that permeates all things, rather than just following established religious rules. This way of thinking invites people to really dive into his words, promoting a type of spiritual journey that is still appealing today amongst those with ears to hear.